I have my reasons. Which are? No, how come you get to keep secrets and I don't? I don't know the answer to my secrets. And I guess you don't get to know the answer to mine. So many unanswered questions. Saturday, friends, welcome to the weekend. Tis I, DM Daddy RPG, once again here to bring you happy fun time tabletop shenanigans in the form of Southern Mountain Horror. <laughs> ah, good times, great times. We are joined today by Miss Mary Davis, portrayed by Artie Do Too, munching on some breakfast. Hazel Booth, portrayed by Jen of Thieves. Emmett McCoy, portrayed by Ashley, the Mage, the Rage, the Brick, the Witch, the Named, Magic Ashley, the Brick. And Evelyn Brick. Caldwell, or he who has not had been named yet, except for one NPC if you've been paying attention, uh, portrayed this week by... <laughs> and we're up to three bricks that I haven't even gotten through intros. Great! Awesome! Good job, uh, everyone. Uh, portrayed by, uh, this time, Glenn Dizzle once again. And we are, of course, Sans uh, Fighter Guy uh, this week as he has family obligations and responsibilities and things and whatnot. But normally we are joined by Fighter Guy, who is the portrayed portrayer of Mr. Leslie Clark. Uh, yeah, so, Abbott, tell us some stuff that happened last game. Stuff that happened last game, we <laughs> hit a pothole in the dirt road and broke the wagon wheel, and we were accosted by children, or, yeah, we were accosted by children. Um, <laughs> found out that Leslie might very well be related to one, Commander Clark, the ripe old age of 10 years old in Maybe. the Deathier Woods. I don't actually remember his age. I just said ripe age of 10 because that child imagination. Hazel. Mm, 
Leslie wandered off and uh, found some red wolf pups to get famous for, took a picture of those. And then they also were accosted and kind of sort of kidnapped by children for a parlay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Miss Mary Davis. So we were captured by children, which is a little embarrassing, but that's okay. Um, who had very imaginative little minds that took us to Fort Wonder. Yeah. And demanded that we give them our camera that we took pictures of the wolf pups with. And it was Leslie, Mary, and Evelyn that were first to arrive at Fort Wonder for that. Um, and despite trying to ask what the camera was for, the children refused to tell us, saying that we would not understand. And how right they were. And Evelyn? Well... After, uh, after the whole thing with the camera, there was a bit of running back and forth. Uh, little, a few missed, uh, meetings along the way with camera deliveries and <laughs> back and forth like that. And then he came across this really nasty, invisible thing that had one of the kids hoisted up into the air. Um, then, uh, Mr. Clark just said he believes he believes, and he shot it. And it actually hit something. Hey. Made everybody else start believing. The Heck. Fought an invisible goo thing, and then Emma chopped down a tree. Chopped down a tree that started shooting black goo out at me. And, and we all had it. trying to take a swing at me. So yeah, and then we ended with a happy make-believe feast. For everyone but Evelyn. For everyone but Evelyn. This is right. true. Hazel also didn't really eat. <laughs> Hazel rarely ever does. <laughs> ah. And of course, eventually, Mr. Jim Johnson, or John Johnson, whatever we want to call him, uh, <laughs> made his way back and repaired the wagon you guys continued onward towards Tipton, Tennessee, uh, having been explained that there were multiple boys out here just kind of existing with no parental supervision, he said that he was going to uh, have another wagon sent out, and there's a place conveniently in Tipton that would be able to take them in. It's called The Home. It's an orphanage of sorts. It's for kids that have lost their parents or people that just need a place to stay and lay low and wait for. So, uh, Mr. Clark, of course, graciously volunteered to stay behind and would make sure that the boys made it safely to the home and he'll catch up with y'all in Tipton. You guys just go ahead. But hey, don't worry. Reggie will be with you. And the lovely, lovely, magnificent little pigeon does as he's told and stays behind with the group, or goes ahead with the group. That way, uh, once Leslie Clark gets there, uh, he'll be able to meet back up with you. Reggie will go find him and bring him to the group. And that is how we are hand-waving Futter Guy being away for this episode. Here's the real question. Whose shoulder is Reggie on? Currently, no one's. He's just chilling on the side. Of the wagon. And you guys proceed onward to Tipton, Tennessee, and with little to no problems. Uh, actually, everything's pretty okay. For once? For once, things don't go wrong. Hazel's silent in assuming that lack of misfortune is because she hasn't said anything. <laughs> Look at Evelyn, she's just reading. She's doing her thing in the park. Is oh. Evelyn blue or red? Oh. That song was awfully loud. <laughs> Here, I, I help out the... 
There we go. This is the wrong song. We'll go to this song. As you guys are approaching the edge of Tipton, uh, Evelyn is reading her book. Emmett, what are you doing? I'm taking a hook now. Okay. Hey, Hazel, what are you doing? Just sitting there quietly watching things as they roll by. Mary, what are you doing? Sitting quietly with my hands in my lap. Okay. Mary, Hazel, both of you give me a d20. Hey! Hey! <laughs> look at that! Ooh. It's quiet. It's kind of peaceful. It's uneventful. You both are just sitting there quietly. Slight little snoring sounds coming from Emmett. His hat tipped down over the over his eyes, just napping. Well, also, if any of you are currently uh, hurt, go ahead and heal yourselves up to full. Mm -hmm. And you know, make this fair. Pet. You guys are both okay. more perceptive than Reginald. Good job. <laughs> um Hazel. Well would you look at that? No, seriously, Hazel, look at that. <laughs> and you, you, your, head, your eyes start scanning. And what's odd is like, you're like, you're not seeing anything. And then like your head kind of like jerks. Not of your own volition, just <clears throat> like you're being guided, specifically pointed at a direction. And there's a bush, and it looks normal. It looks fine. But there's there's a bit of a tinge, like a spray, on side of it as you guys go passing by, and it's a blood splatter. I'm gonna. How fast is this wagon going? Again, not fast. It's a wagon. Hopping out of it. <laughs> Climbing over Emmett to hop out of it. But Evelyn notice, uh... No, Evelyn's... Uh, the Evelyn is... Uh, you'd notice Hazel getting out. You wouldn't notice what. No, just look it up. What's wrong? On the ground, heading for the bush. <laughs> In Hazel, usual fashion, she's not telling the party anything she's just doing. <laughs> she's going for a bush? Gotta yep. be. Well, all right, then. I'm gonna get up and get off the carriage as well. <laughs> are you just hopping over the side or are you also climbing over Mr. McCoy? <laughs> um, how dangerous is it if I go over the side? Not the wagon again. It's not moving fast at all. Yeah. All right. I didn't know if it was like high up or something. Not. Uh, Emmett, you can go ahead and lose, uh, lose three might as Hazel, uh, Definitely, like, accidentally knees you in your solar plexus as she climbs over you. Okay. And that's one brick down of the four before we even got started. I'm not even going to argue. That checks out. <laughs> she's just... Okay. Yeah, it checks out. Jen sounds like... It seems like she's, like, clumsy. Not even clumsy. Just straight, just limbs. Not caring. <laughs> We're distracted. What am I supposed to be looking at over here? What is uh, you get closer to the bush and, you know, obviously, <laughs> oh, there's blood on the bush. And as, like, you, like, look around, there's a trail of blood leading a little bit off the road. And just a foot, kind of, it looks like a body has been dragged, but there's a foot kind of just peeking out from the hiding place. It was placed too haphazardly. I'm going to follow the trail of blood. Follow. To, to 
until I get to the foot and All see right. if the foot is attached to a body. The foot is indeed attached to a body. <laughs> a skinless body. Yikes. It's a it's a heavy set man. Maybe about six foot two. Looks in decent shape for a bigger fella. But he's not outside of a couple of stab wounds. There's nothing weird or odd outside of, of course, the missing flesh. The skin. Yes. Completely peeled away. Perfectly. Like a masterful person who's good at skinning. Skin to human. Just gonna crouch down beside it. And Mary, um, you of course will walk up on this scene as well. All right, Mister Deep Voice, what? Why is this important? We're just making you aware of potential threats. Just. Just. I don't know what they like to What's up, Mary? I was just gonna say, looks like the poor thing needs a jacket. Well, that's a joke you can make if you really wanna. I just did. And I'm gonna walk over and kneel next to the body as well. Mm hmm. Is it skinned like an animal would be? Or. Like, are there tool marks or anything? No, it, it, like an animal would be. Like someone who took the time to peel the flesh off of him. I'm gonna so reach you, a hand. Sorry. We got stabbed. Right there. Looks like it. I'm gonna reach a hand out and just feel. Like, is it if, like, the body is, like, stiff or if it's still, like, malleable in some way? Just to figure out how long ago it was. Uh, Rigor Mortis is not fully set in yet. So you can assume, Miss Mary, that this is indeed relatively fresh. Hmm. Well, he hasn't been lying here long. That's not very comforting. As Mary, like, pokes body and tries to move stuff. <laughs> Unbothered by the dead, skinless corpse in front of her. Hey, Miss Davis. Mm-hmm. Anything ever get to you? Not anymore. Continue poking. <laughs> I have my reasons. Which are... No, how come you get to keep secrets and I don't? I don't know the answer to my secrets. <laughs> and I guess you don't get to know the answer to mine. So many unanswered questions. Aren't there? Life is a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any tracks, like footsteps or animal prints or anything? Are there? Give me a roll. Let's see. Sure as fuck are. <laughs> not an animal. Not boot prints. What prints? Sorry. Boot. Sorry. Boot prints. A person. A human. Gonna... Human form. Or at least, uh, or maybe it's a critter that knows how to wear shoes and I only walk possible. on it and only walk on its hind legs. Anything's possible out here in our mountains of Appalachia. Her, 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 I'm a human. Her, her, look at me go. Um, her, 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 do they lead in, into the woods or toward town? They look like they lead into the woods. I'm going to follow them as far as I can. 
Uh, you start following and you move deeper out into the woods. You know what? We have woods picture for this. I would also like to follow. And perfect. Matt? Yeah? Would I notice it's taking them a long time to go pee? Uh, you you would indeed notice it is taking them quite a long time to go pee. <laughs> that woman's plumbing. Uh, Evelyn uh, looks up from the book, taps Emmett on the shoulder with her foot. Hmm. Hey. Wagon's uh, coming. Wagon comes around a bend, and Mr. Johnson like brings it to a stop. Re also, clearly realizing the ladies are taking a while. But right up ahead is a sign that says "Welcome to Tipton." You can actually see civilization in a town up ahead. Everyone looks for over to the town for a minute, kind of like it's right there. <laughs> You're um, right there. You're right there. <laughs> but. That legs that wakes up, Emmett. Hey, the mm. what? Has Hazel and Mary been gone for a long time? Mm. I'll open the door. I will watch over. Okay. Well, yeah. I grab my axe, <laughs> jump off, and go in the direction of the bushes that Evelyn pointed out. Evelyn and Paula. Right. Letting them take the lead. Still uh, yeah, it's Emmett, still... Emmett, Evelyn, both of you give me a d20 roll. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Emmett, you're pulling your bearings together. Evelyn, you're too caught up in being concerned for Miss Hazel and Miss Mary. Uh, Emmett, as you're like gathering your things and put, pulling yourself together and you can see town, oh my god, an actual town, actual civilization, maybe actual food, well, food and a bed can be acquired and a bath. Hey, there's a lot of the townsfolk seem to be pulling themselves together into like a small group, a, a posse of some sort, which is a little odd. But you're not all the way out there to them yet. So you, you have the choice. You can either go talk with the posse or go find the ladies. Which will Emmett decide? I'm going to point out the posse to Evelyn. And the, you've got better people skills than I do. Could you go talk to them and find out what's going on? I'm going to go try to find the ladies. That shouldn't be for us. We just got here. You would hope. <laughs> did, did did you piss somebody off? No, but what, what, what member of our group didn't get on the wagon with us? Uh -huh. The one that's most likely to piss everyone off. That's the truth. Okay. So Evelyn is going to go talk to the townsfolk. Then it's doing what Emmett does and has been told by everyone. Keep the ladies safe. Yep. Emmett! You'll get an, XP, get an XP and decide another person to get one. Oh, it's 100% going down one. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Beautiful. As you go to step out of the wagon, uh, Maybe it's just too much stuff. Maybe it's just Emmett half awake, something, but you stumble and you trip and lose some speed damage. Uh, uh, we'll go with, uh, boom, slash roll 1d4. Two, lose two speed. As you, as you twist your ankle just a bit. Stepping off the wagon. The stationary, not moving wagon. It's just the general. Ah, fuck. <laughs> ah, fuck. Right. And right. then just keep on walking. Right. You Before head. You head. You're walking back down the path. You, of course, were asleep and you didn't really see where the ladies went. But. Nope. One of the bushes with a splattering of blood. If you were a bedding man, Mr. McCoy, this is probably the way, the direction that the ladies would go. Especially, especially 
those two ladies. Yep. I walk over to the, the blood, the splatter of blood in the bush. You, you walk over to the splatter of blood. When you're there, you'll notice a trail of blood leading deeper into the woods. And if when you follow that, you find a skinned human body. Oh, I really hope that this wasn't those two that did this. Emmett, you are able to piece together that they haven't been gone that long. There's no way they could perfectly skin this body. <laughs> Not with the tiny lady hands. With what Emmett has seen in the past day. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, days. Precision. Days. Past day, in the past days, he, he has seen Miss Hazel pull out a black stick, wave it, and a skeleton rise out of the ground. And Miss Mary Davis, unbothered by everything. You would also note that you've never seen either of these ladies with any kind of knife or blade for skinning. This is true. Check myself real quick to make sure I have both, both of my axes. You do. No, no, the little one's still here, so I must not have taken that one. Uh, and... I'm going to roll to try and see the, the, the tracks and everything. Sure. That way. <laughs> I start following the tracks. Very you know easy. Two, Very simple. Knowing these two, they followed the boots. They probably did, and nothing You good. also follow our tracks. <laughs> yep. I do. Which, is Miss Mary Davis wearing heels, by the way? That is a question I've had this entire time and keep forgetting to ask. Um, I believe that I am wearing, like, I've always pictured them as kind of flats, but a little bit of heel. Like, slip-on black sort of little shoes. Okay. Because those leave a very distinct impression in dirt. That's why I was asking. Mm -hmm. I, I just picture Hazel is just walking around barefoot. Hazel. Being the wild child that she is. <laughs> Hazel. Mary. You guys continue following the, the footprints, and eventually they, the trail kind of goes cold. Either, like, somebody now started being mindful, or they stopped walking. But the tracks just stop mid, right at the edge of a small clearing. There's nothing really out here, out there, except for, looks like a, a smokehouse? Like, small wooden structure, like a hut. It's kind of just been enclosed. It's got a door. There's a padlock on it. What's in there? Hmm. Should we give it a knock? There's a lock on the door. I ain't gonna answer. And then also we don't want to let it out. They lock itself. They lock themselves in there, or did something else lock them? In? I don't think you can lock a door with a padlock on the outside yourself. Hmm. Gotta walk around the house and see if there's an alternative way in that wasn't locked from the outside. Uh, it is. It is the tiniest. It's it's not a house. It's like a it's like a, a shack kind of. Right. Okay. Uh, as you walk around the perimeter, um, from the opposite side, while well, there's the tiny tiny thing, there is it looks like a cellar door that's also padlocked. Just hmm. kind of like very similar to what you ex encountered out in um, out in Not Barlow. It's like two wooden doors that could open up and lead down. Well, that's awful familiar. But also padlocked. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Are there gonna windows? Kind of... Nope, no windows. Creep up a few steps behind Mary and reach a hand out and just touch the building. And listen. Outside of an occasional, like, clink of a chain, you don't hear anything. Huh. 
Hello? Shh. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> no. Nothing, try ch- to... nothing changes after that hello. There's no sounds of, like, something moving around. There's no sounds of any kind of acknowledgement to your presence. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of grab Mary's shirt and start to back away. And, well, and Emmett, as you follow the follow the footprints of the trail, you'll find your ladies next to what looks like a smokehouse or a hunting lodge, not a hunting lodge, but a place to, like store like carcasses. You've seen these all over these mountains. Never seen one. You never seen one just standing on its own out in the middle of the woods. But what are y'all two doing all the way out here? We're, we're we're not opening any of these locks, that's for sure. Aren't we? Aren't you curious to know what's in there? No. There's something in there, and it's moving, and it sounds like it's chained up, so actually, no. Mm-mm. But it didn't sound bothered by my voice. Yeah, that just means it can eat you. <laughs> you want to get eaten? I'm not opposed. Who yeah, are you? I have some new things. I'm just enjoying whatever is thrown at me. That shocked me as a player, not just as Emmett already. What the fuck? <laughs> I've lived a long life, trapped in that old house of my daddy's. I'm ready to explore the world and see what it has. What did your daddy do to you? <laughs> I guess that's something for a later date. Because as I said, it's been a long life. You, you just said you didn't mind if you got eight. Uh, that seems like Matt, a now kind of question. Matt, are there well, we all like, die uh, someday. Yeah, are but there, we don't ask for it. Are there gaps in the boards for the shack that are wide enough for me to like peek through? Uh, th- there's one. I'm going a little gap and I'm going to peer through the hole. Just to see what I see on the inside. Uh, it's pretty dark on the inside. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you can't really make out much. But you do know that if you had, like, the right kind of tools, rather than breaking a lock, you could easily probably pry a plank or two off of this side to get a better look. Just get your head, get your head on in there. But this is someone's structure. I don't want to... They demolish in it without a reason. You, again, I'm not saying you would destroy it. You could pry them <laughs> off and put them back. Oh. Ah, you know. Care for Mary. <laughs> a harm for Hazel. <laughs> We're asking such a question. Listen, D Foy said it was just let me know about something we should worry about, and this seems like something we should worry about. So can we just back up? Oh, speaking of things we should worry about, and I'll turn back to the other ladies. Um, when we pulled up the town, they were forming some sort of posse at like the town gate. So maybe we shouldn't be hanging around this building with something inside it. Hey, you! You hear what? calling out from from the other edge of the clearing. Hey, you! Okay. Oh. I look at the where the voice is coming from. Uh, a portly, kind of tall man is stepping out from the woods in the clearings. Sheriff uniform. He kind of looks official like but I take a look at my watch what time what time is it man it's like 10 in the morning morning sir what y'all doing out here I was I, I'm wondering can I half duck behind Emmett mm-hmm. uh, he, uh, he, 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 can, he continues making an approach towards you guys I ain't never seen you folk around Tipton before. No, 
was just coming into town. We were on the uh, wagon that was outside of the town. I don't know um, nothing about no wagon. I've been out here in the woods uh, since about daybreak. Uh, How yeah. long have you guys said you've been around here? Ma'ams, ladies, nice to meet you. Um, Pleasure, Sharon. 30 minutes, give or take. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We just got over to Tipton. Mm. Well, um, these, these two hopped off our wagon. I was coming to find them because they were taking longer than... Well, well, we've had us a string of missing persons lately, and, um, well, I don't know, uh, this might not be a good time, or, you say you've been here for about 30 minutes now? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I said, I just got here with these two, we're caught up with them, but probably been in the area about 30 minutes. Alleged Allegedly. Sorry, new faces and missing people, and now right here on the edge of town, next to. Uh, totally understand the suspicion there, Sheriff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've got concerned citizens. Who are you doing your job? I totally being, understand being, a bit, be, being just a bit uppity. Um, my name's Emmett McCoy, Sheriff. Um, I don't believe I got the pleasure of getting your name. Sheriff George Frank. Pleasure to meet you, Sheriff. Hold out a hand, take his hand and shake it. Yep, shakes it. Oh, good, 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 good. It's always nice to have new faces. This is, and I'll point at Miss Mary Davis. Hey, Hazel, Mary Davis. Hazel, when he says the line, it's always nice to have, it's always nice to have new faces. One of the voices just <clears throat> in your head. <laughs> this is Miss Mary Davis, um, and this one that's hiding behind me for some reason as Miss Hazel Booth. Um, Ma'ams. Another one of our members uh, of our group, there's five of us in total. Uh, one stayed back with a group of children we found about two miles yonder. Uh, that is much further than two miles. Uh, back, back yonder down the road. Um, Emma, you're saying too much. I'm just being polite, letting them know, like, kind of what our group looks like. He don't need to know. Well, I mean, I am he investigating even... missing people, and there are now new persons of interest. He don't much want us here in the first place. Oh, I never said I didn't want people here in my great town of Tipton. I'm just, town. I just have to be uh, cautious around new people in these trying times. I, I lean back, kind of, and whisper to, to Hazel, it's always better to be not on good terms with the lawmen. No, if they're not on good terms with us. How many folk y'all missing? Meanwhile, back in town. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Not answered. <laughs> Evelyn, you go approaching, uh, go to start approaching, and like that, there is a bit of a mob forming. Okay. All, all the big strong men of Tipton, like making sure they have supplies, they're getting things together. And the women folks is like, be careful. You've been gotta be cautious. It's dangerous out there in the woods. <laughs> Standard. Uh -huh. We just got the right to vote. We don't have the right to go look at dangerous situations in the woods yet. They're just kind of mingling around, listening, you know, seeing if they know what's where they're headed or what they're doing. Uh, they, you're not able to put together a lot, but mm. what you are able to parse. Give me a d20 roll. What? I take that back. You're not able to parse together shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In hold fact, on. hold on. Wait, no, because that only did like the one, and because of the slash at the end, uh, normally like should roll, I die. Roll it again. Oh, oh okay. 
Don't add extra things. Uh, it was a typo, but I still don't know. <laughs> uh, you're, you're able to parse together. It seems like there's been some missing people. Uh, one lady is talking about how they got to go find, how you better find, find Billy. He's young and he's been gone the longest. To uh, a, a lady folk, uh, Miss uh, mm, Jessica has been missing for for a hot for about two days. Like the sheriff went out looking last night, hasn't come back. Maybe the sheriff's gone now, and that's why there's this whole mob mentality of well, we're gonna go. We gotta at least find the sheriff. And all no, all no. And off to the side, there's another group of people that look like they're talking to nuns. Like it looks like three three nunnery caretakers. They're all dressed in gray, high collared gray dresses. Uh, they've got the the headpiece, everything, but they all look oddly similar. They're pleasant and they're talking with the people and they're, they're addressing the things. Things should be fine. It's like, just have faith. All will be well. Mm -hmm. And if anybody needs anything, you can come see them at the home. While they're here, I want to try to find my way to whatever home they're talking about. Oh, it is very apparent what home they're talking about. Okay. Just even standing here on the town square, off in the distance, down the road, not in town proper, but close enough that you can eyeball it. Uh, there is a large stone building. Looks half church, half orphanage. This stands out as would be the destination of your young cohorts that you met down in the woods the home. All right. The babe. And off to, this, off to the side right. of it, you do notice a very happy, very pleasant, very well-kept looking apple orchard. Oh, that shit is nice. Bunch of kids running around, picking apples, putting them in baskets, doing their daily chores and tasks. All right. Uh, I'm <clears throat> gonna sit here and uh, hmm. Oh, hi there. I haven't seen you before. A lady comes up approaching you. Not one of the nuns, okay. just townsfolk lady. Mm -hmm. I just got into town. Oh, well. About. 20, 30 minutes ago. Well, I, 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 I am Gracie, Gracie Johnson. It's nice to meet you. And nice to meet you. I'm Miss <laughs> Evelyn. It, it is. Uh, I'm sorry that you came in a bad time. It's like there's that there's there, there's some bad, like there's bad, a... bad things are happening around town. What in the world? We don't know. The sheriff went off looking, but he ain't come back. And, and so, so, so a bunch of the men are going to go out into the woods looking for people. Uh, I hope they all stay safe. I'm sure they will strength in numbers, you know? Mm-hmm. There's like a bear or a cougar or something. We're going to hopefully we'll be able to handle it. Oh, I don't have any, uh, any doubt that y'all will be able to. What brings you to town? Honestly, I was just traveling with some friends. Uh, they went off to go use the bathroom. They said they'll catch back up. Where? Points out the gate. Well, I hope they. I hope your friends are capable and stay safe. Yeah, we sent them. Uh, uh, sent the big guy with them. They should be all right. Meanwhile, back in the woods. Hazel, what was your question? Um, how many people went missing? 
Well, uh, around about four currently. They've been missing for about five days now. Mm. Why, y'all seen something? Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, saw a little bit of blood a while back when I was coming this way. And which direction did you come from? Points in the general direction that I came from. All right. Y'all be safe out here now. And if you're going to be in town, uh, I will come find you if I have further questions. And he starts marching the direction Emmett pointed, which all three of you know is to a skinned dead body. We're going to get arrested. We might not have to be. Getting arrested on your list of things you want to do, Miss Mary Davis? Of course not. Oh, but it's a new thing you ain't never done. I'm just gonna step. I'm just gonna take a, a full step back from these two, just in case things start going south for them. Hazel's still behind you. She's <laughs> just gonna stumble. Oh, you step directly into her. Okay, let me phrase that. I'm gonna step. Hazel out lose two speed as you get stepped on <laughs> by Emmett's big boots, and that covers Hazel's specific car. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. I, was, I forgot you were behind me. I've been talking to you this whole time. I'm, my, my ears face this way, not that way, unfortunately. Well, I guess that explains a lot since you didn't hear a word I said. Damn. <laughs> I was just trying to, you know... Account for everyone with the law, then. Hmm. This thing we better be careful for is that what happened to everybody here? I don't know what happened here. By the way, neither of y'all have like a skinning knife or anything on you, right? No, I mean, neither of y'all did that, you know, right? Did you think such a thing? I just gotta ask. I mean, I've seen Miss Hazel wave a stick and a skeleton popped out of the ground. When that it, happened? Uh, when we went into that little uh, cellar. Well, I can assure you that man was none of our business. All right, that now, man's gonna think we killed that other man. I had to ask, because after everything I've seen in the last few days, I mean, whatever the fuck that goat demon looking thing was. You think uh, one of us is a goat demon? No. I was saying after seeing that goat demon thing, I'd, I'd rather ask and be sure. Because after everything I've seen, I mean, I never really believed in all this supernatural hoodoo voodoo bullshit. I'm a simple Hazel's man. just going to turn away and start walking toward town. It's a simple man. I just do logging. <laughs> and now I guess occasionally monster hunting? Hazel is tired of this um, conversation and is leaving. Mary, Emmett, are you guys staying to investigate the shack or are we leaving it alone? I leave it alone. Mary. I am walking. <laughs> I say, if Mary tries to interact with it, she's getting picked up. <laughs> okay, cool. I am not afraid to pick y'all up. Then we will go oh, back. Mr. Simple Man. <laughs> Do you Hello. still not believe? Oh, I believe it's just it. I'd rather play it on the safe side. 
Evelyn. Mm-hmm. What are we doing back in town? Trying to find everybody a uh, place to shack up. Well, oh, there the, there is an uh, inn above the general store that has a room or two available. Um, of course, there's also the home, which usually has extra beds and like a wing for those that don't have a roof over their own heads. All are welcome to the Lord's house. I think Miss Hazel might be more comfortable at the end. Get a drink whenever she wants to wake up. So go on to the end. Okay. Uh, Try to find room and board. Uh, there is room and board. It is. It's a little steep. It's a. It's about f- five dollars a night. <clears throat> they can. They can pay me back. Is that maybe if we all pull our money? Well, so Emma, much- you fortunately have a credit. I do. Were you just trying to ask me how much money you have? Yeah, I don't even have an idea. None. Uh, None? Okay. Then I guess that's going to be that. Matt, question for when I get back to town. My credit would would cover everyone's room, right? Or just mine? It would cover a room. Okay. Yes, we'll wander over to the home then. Uh, are you going to wander to the other side of town to go to the home, or are you going to wait for your party? I, honestly, the home might want donations, so uh, we'll, we'll wait. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, then, in that case, if that's the extent of what you're trying to do, eventually Emmett, Hazel, and Mary emerge onto the path and finish their walk into town as a bunch of, as about a dozen men folk start making their way out to the woods. Armed, prepared, Hey! To the group of men. A couple of the men turn their head at a woman shouting at them, and they don't seem concerned. It's more just, there's this woman yelling at us. What's that shack out there in the clearing? Uh, A smokehouse for dead deer and things we hunted. What's in it? Dead deer and things we've hunted. Nah. I'm just gonna keep walking. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> uh, 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 when she stopped to yell at the group of men, uh, as soon as she starts walking away, I start apologizing to them for her. And then just catch up with her. Okay. It was like, Miss Hazel. Oh, my. <laughs> no, not directly at Hazel. Just, just a general. Just why? Why well, what? I had a question. You could have asked it a little nicer. Like how? You could have just asked him about it in a slightly less aggressive tone. Oh no! Are you one of them men? Oh, I just, you kind of startled them for a second. I don't think they're used to aggressive women. Not aggressive. And and you, Miss Hazel, being the petite little thing you are, probably startled them even more. If that's what they're scared of, they sure won't like me at all. Are you afraid of me? No, not really. Do I think you could be scary? I think you probably, it could be if you really wanted to, but in a general sense, no. I ain't scared of you. And they ain't got no reason to be. Give her a small, just just a quick head pat, a single pat. 
And as you guys are venturing into town, uh, Evelyn, you notice uh, one of the nuns who's standing there uh, turns to like, look at Emmett, Hazel, and Mary and just kind of tugs on the sleeve of one of the other sisters. And then that one looks at the three of them until all three of the nuns are looking at your group of three and like whispering amongst themselves. Am I close enough to try to hear? No. Okay. It's a cult, I'm telling you, it's a fucking cult. And the last sister, the, the one, last one that is uh, drawn attention to of the newcomers to town, just gives a very polite, kind of joyful, happy wave in the direction of Mary. Evelyn just kind of looks back at Mary. Friend of yours, Miss Davis? And then back at the... Just... Hope to be one day. Cool yard man says there's something in Tipton for her. Hmm. Gonna join the nunnery? <laughs> I don't know where my life is going, but that old man said my daddy was here. The one you don't like? Yep, that one. Miss Mary, where is it? Out, out, out of pure curiosity, if you ever find your daddy, are you planning on hitting him? You are a very presumptuous man. <laughs> is he a real daddy? I sure hope so. <laughs> I didn't want to make mommy no liar. Where's your mama? Who knows? I haven't seen her in a long time. If she were smart, she'd be far from here. But she married daddy, so who knows? Not clearly, clearly not talking to either of the two. H Hazel's gonna ask. Hell's with this woman. <laughs> he, just just to make sure, sure just to make up. sure, just to make sure I heard right. You said hell's with this woman. The hell is with this woman. Yes. What do I mean, Artie? You got what me do you mean? Going, you got me going, what the actual fuck is your character backstory? What do you like, mean? Hazel, <laughs> one of the voices just says, responds, yes. <laughs> Which one? Oh, yes. Man. Hazel. The, 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 the crony old woman voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna walk away toward Evelyn. Evelyn is coming up to the group. Oh <laughs> look! Oh look! There's your other. There's your other friend. <laughs> They're not my friends. I see that. That's not nice. Miss Mary has been nothing but kind to us. Why? I don't know. But she has been. Can I look her and secure my lodging, Miss Evelyn? They want five dollars a night over here. <laughs> and beds made of gold? That's my yeah. Pulls out the couple, couple of crumpled dollars and then like a little like a little ticket stub type thing that just says Room credit. Uh, I'll make us a camp. I got a couple of dollars and a credit for a room. Apparently, the home down the way's got some uh, got some beds spare. But I wanted to make sure we were all together. <laughs> In case they were asking for some donations or something, I don't know. I'm gonna sleep away from y'all. I'll just make a camp. It's fine. I understand. It's been a long road. 
Evelyn, you are very aware that there is something out in the woods killing people. After seeing the dead body, there's clearly something out in the woods. Yeah. And now Hazel's talking about just, I'll just go camp. <laughs> well, I wasn't figuring she'd going all out in the woods. Miss Hazel, you, didn't you hear about the thing out there in the woods? Lean, lean down, Devlin. Yeah, Not from a, a person. We found a dead skinned human. Oh, that's a thing. Yeah. Sheriff probably going to come and ask some questions, and somebody pointed it right out. I'm, I'm going to hand the little room credit ticket. Oh, over to the three ladies. Um, I'm only good for like a room. Yeah, it's the three of y'all want to go get a room at the end. Girl oh, snack. Yeah. I can figure something out. I'd rather not split us all up. I don't. Oh. It's not safe for me to be around y'all. You keep saying that. But what do you mean by that, Miss Hazel? I mean, aside from me and Leslie running our mouths a little too much, according to you, what, what, what exactly do you mean? People around me just get hurt. Bad stuff happens. Everyone gets hurt. I, mean, I say we're safe life. in the wagon. The wagon breaks. And we fixed it. Not before being in mortal peril. We did help some kids, though, because it broke. So, I mean, a slightly annoying, a little nuisance led to helping some kids out. That's... I mean, Miss Hazel, you see where we live, right? Every day is mortal peril. No, it was not. The woods trying to kill you, it's the people, so. And if it's not either of those two, it's generally the mountain itself. Yeah. Stuff dangerous enough without me around. You're fine, Miss Hazel. Like I said, Miss Hazel, you're not scary, and a doctor really all that dangerous. And just another single head pat. If this man pets us one more time. I'm with you on that one. But damn that pillow. Come on, let's go in, rest, get a bath. I don't a need bath. no bath. Get a drink. They got those? They got those. <laughs> Get a drink booze. Now you're talking maybe, my language. Maybe, maybe one. It's early. We don't have to decide where we're sleeping. That's all right. Well, I still think y'all should take this and I'm going to hand the, the room voucher over to Evelyn. Over to Evelyn. Um, they probably got a small room I can sleep in, like a little closet or something. For cheap. We can put you in the wardrobe. <laughs> you won't fit. <laughs> probably not even if I curl my knees. You guys would all note that the three nuns are making their way back towards the giant gray stone structure on the edge of town. And they got an apple orchard out there by that home, too. I was checking out a little bit. Very nice apples. I'm going to take a minute to, like, survey how much of the town I can see and, and see if anything looks gross or spooky. From everything that you're able to see right now, Tipton looks fine. 
There's nothing <laughs> gross. There's nothing spooky. There's no like corrupted trees or evil presences around buildings. The home looks a bit foreboding, but not in any kind of supernatural way. It's just gray and big and neutral, like a purgatory. And, you know, the outside of the main road proper, which has, you know, your general good store, the inn, a bar, a couple of other here and there shops and whatnot. Um, off of the main road, going down different paths, there's houses and so on and so forth. So it seems like quaint, quiet little town. Have we picked up anything we could uh, sell? Probably get a little extra money. Oh, I know Miss Davis over there has a camp stove. I've got one as well. I don't really know if we need two of them running around with us. What we need money for? For the booze in the night. Can't sell my axe. No, I won't we'll try to sell your axe. I know that's important to you. If, uh, if, if Leslie was, on, was with us, I'm sure he'd have some stuff we could sell. What about that broken camera? Oh, Miss Mary, you still have your broken camera with you, right? I didn't see any use in carrying around a broken camera. Well, I was figuring somebody might be able to fix it up. We sell it to them on the cheap. It's fine. I don't. I don't need any. Keep your stuff. I can probably go find us some food. So we don't need to buy that either. Mm. Oh. Um, uh, no, we just, uh, just I still wait. don't feel too comfortable with you just camping out in the woods by yourself. Uh, it would probably be better if you stay, stuck with that, but the other two and you know stayed in town. I can probably go a bed over there at the church thing. I mean... Y'all hungry? I'm gonna go find us some food. Sounds like a plan. Hopefully not another body. She'll start turning and heading toward the woods. <laughs> uh, which direction are you going? Give me a cardinal. North is the direction of the home where there's the apple orchard. The rest is. Uh, south would be where you found the body and the sheriff, where you we'll saw the go. men going. We'll go west. Awesome. All right, so Hazel's going to the woods to the west. Mary, what are you doing? I've been... Jesus, MacBook. Hello, I'm here. Hi. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since that's happened. Uh, I've been... I've been thinking about that, actually. I guess I'm just wandering... Wandering around. Okay. Perfect. Emmett, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to find... I'm going to wander around town and see if anyone needs any firewood chopped for like, any odd jobs that need to be done for a little extra cash. Okay, perfect. And Evelyn? Uh, also be kind of wandering around looking for odd jobs for cash. Any kind of reading or writing need to be done for somebody. Um, signing, uh, signing papers on behalf of whatever. 
Anything like that. All right. Secretarial perfect. work. Mm -hmm. right. So we will start with Miss Mary on her own out here in Tifton. Uncollapse you. Mary, you start wandering around the streets and taking in the sights and looking around at the people. Uh, give me a d20 roll. Jesus. <laughs> As you're wandering and, you know, everybody's very polite and friendly. Like, they give you a wave. You're a happy person. And mm -hmm. they're equally happy and tickled, one could say, to me. <laughs> But, and then they go back about their normal business. The kids running, playing. It's the weekend. There's no school. And you're just wandering around, taking it in, looking around. And as you're walking between a pair of houses, uh, they're a dog bowl, like a, a nice, like, metal bowl that's clearly meant for some, for, like, some courier to come eat. It Does, doesn't look right. Like, you, you've seen dog food, you've seen kibble, and even when, like, they're given, like, meat or scraps, it's not this bloody. It's a bowl, like, that, that dried, irony blood kind of just, like, set in the metal, almost. And it looks gonna... like, looks like, something rolled out nearby it, it's great and it's it's gross but small small little ball I'm gonna walk over and see what it is uh do you pick it up or do you like grab a stick and turn it over or like wh wh how do you see what it is um i'll pick up a stick for now pick up the stick and you go to poke at it a bit and it, it squishes as like it rolls and like pus kind of like starts seeping out of it. A couple of maggots fall out as one brown eye looks up at you. Well, hello there. I'm going to look up and see where it rolled from. No, like, that's what you poked with the stick and rolled over. Oh, okay. An eyeball. Near a bloody bowl. <laughs> what, what does the house look like that the bowl is sitting next to? Uh, it is in between uh, two houses that are built almost on top of each other. You had to kind of, like, wiggle to get, like, down here. But uh, both of them are standard. Looks like you ordered it and built it out of a Sears catalog kind of deal. Nothing, nothing significant or anything important about the houses. They just look thrown together, built up from the ground houses. <laughs> and then was the eye in the bowl or on the grass? On the grass. The All bowl right. is empty outside of caked blood on it. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll pick up the eyeball. Why not? <laughs> Mary Davis picks up rotten eyeball. <laughs> just the, eyeball. You can sell that for two copper. <laughs> two them, co them cuckoo <laughs> eyes. <laughs> them cuckoo eyes. We have been playing. Wow. We have been playing WoW as a community together. It has been great. It has been great. <laughs> I almost walked out of the cave. <laughs> um, is is this like? Is there a trail leading somewhere of like nope. blood or visceral? Nope. All right. Interesting. Um. 
Is there like that? a name? Is there like a mailbox with a name on it for the house? Uh, Johnson's. And as you're walking oh. by a window, you can hear uh, a soft sobbing coming from inside the house. I'm going to knock on the door. <laughs> Who is it? My name is Miss Mary Davis. Is everything all right in there? I don't know. I couldn't hear that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, do you need some company? Do you hear the latch of the, do of the door lock turning to like unlock? Sure, it's always nice to have a friend. <laughs> door opens. There's like a younger wo younger woman, maybe like late 20s. Just All right. holding a picture frame, like tight to her chest and just trying to fight back the sobbing. Aw, now what's wrong? My husband went out about like a week ago and, and he hasn't come home. I just miss him. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm going to open my arms for a hug. Uh, she does not relinquish her hold on the picture frame, but she does lean into the hold. All right. I'll hug her. Mm-hmm. How long has he been gone for? About seven days, I just said. Sorry. Um. <laughs> I'm sure you'll see him again. He's not gone forever. Don't give up hope. I thought I heard him come to the door the other night. <laughs> but... It won't him. He didn't have his keys or his stuff or anything. He kept telling me to let him in. And I was like, "Why can't you what? just come in?" And uh, and he and 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 he he called me a stupid woman. And he's never talked to me like that before. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Things out there can change a man. <laughs> uh, Hazel, you go wandering off to the west side of the woods. And you're out there foraging. And you're trying to find stuff for you and your friends. <laughs> There's a there's a down tree kind of like blocking the path and you step over it. And it's like you get your bearings and you look in the woods, there's sporadically there's just down trees. Look like they've been gnawed on. But like a beaver, but it's these trees are massive. They're big. There's no way, like, a beaver could do this. When the red dogs ate trees, they were just, they just, they were just gone. Right. They, 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 they were just... They'd take chunks out. It didn't look like beavers or anything. I'll, I'll wander over to one of the trees to take a closer look. Yes. Sort of crouching and touching where it, it got gnawed off. Are you looking at the tree or are you looking at the stump? I'm gonna look at the tree first and, and then is it, did it fall directly beside it? Like tipped looks, over? Looks like it. Okay. Then yeah, I'll, I'll look at the tree first and then the stump. 
Uh, it is they are large. It is a large tree. It's lived for a while before it got cut or well chewed down. One could say. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary. It doesn't look gross or evil or menacing. It's, it's old tree. Got knocked down. Is there kind of any pattern to how they've fallen or? It's all sporadic. None of them are all facing in a direction or anything weird. It's like, chewed, fell. I'm I'm kind of gonna wander from from one to another, picking up things as I. It's not. I'm not super focused on them, but I am distracted. Okay. As you wander, give me a D twenty. And you step over a hill. Step up on a hill. And as like you're picking up berries and mushrooms and things that shouldn't be poisonous. <laughs> you glance and something grabs hold of your attention. Something no longer distracted, something to focus on. A whole gathering of downed trees haphazardly pulled and pulled together. Looking like it's kind of like trying to make some kind of dam in a northwest direction. Like facing the northwest. Is there, is it like over a body No, of you water? went west. You went west. Yeah. Northeast. Yeah. Is it like over a body of water or? Mm -hmm. just, just out there in the woods. It looks like it would be a beaver dam if it was like a large beaver, a gigantic almost titan of a beaver, given how big these trees are. But there's no water. Well, I've never seen anything like that before. I'm gonna kind of abandon my foraging to walk, walk toward the mound of trees. Again, kind of the same thing. There's no markings or wrongness about the trees outside of the fact they're impressively large and what the heck could pull giant adult trees and move them around and set them up in such ways anybody out here give me um, actually you know what with that 20 I'll, I'm just going to give it to you you ask if anybody's out here, in the gathering of trees, in the amassing of the wall, you swear you see some vines, some foliage kind of withdraw into the trees, into the down trees. Schoolhouse man? I'm gonna head right for it. I'm curious now. Kind of crouching to peek in between them. Mary, give me a speed defense. Yep. Or not Mary, Hazel. Sorry, sorry, Hazel. All right, I was about to say, holy hey. crap. No, no, I, I, said like, the, I, said I, the, her. I said the wrong name. I said <laughs> the wrong name. That's on me. It came back it's for seconds. <laughs> Uh, Hazel, you lean down to go peek out or peek in and those vines that had been retreating suddenly lash out and try to grab you, try to like ensnare you. Uh, you are able to definitely dodge back with that awesome roll of 16 as kudzu vines just seem to like lash out and try to grab hold of you. What are y'all doing? Somewhere, trying to stop something? From somewhere. It doesn't seem like it's coming from the wall of trees. It seems like it's all around you in this forest. At least when you're standing right here. 
You're getting ready. Or what? It. So the thing that's killing people in the woods? No. Which it? It. Where's it coming from? Use your eyes. Say close your eyes? I said use your eyes. Oh, use your eyes. I, I will take a look around. Take a look around. You don't see anything wrong. I can't see it. Can you help me see it? No. What are you? I am all-encompassing and ever-growing. You good or bad? I don't know. Me neither. What is, just get a what, what, is, what is good and bad? <laughs> That's a question I'm not smart enough to answer. Be honest with you. I'm going to sit down by the, the improvised dam for a few minutes. Okay. Yes. You wander around asking if there's any work that can be done in town. And a couple yeah. people couple people uh point you out to the east. If anybody's gonna have work, it'll probably be them Jenkins. Are always looking for a hand. They were the Jenkins. Well, uh, they uh, are they are proprietors and uh, philanthropists and entrepreneurs here in our lovely town of Tip Tim. And you said a whole bunch of big words. I don't quite understand. I don't get it either. That's just what they say. All right. You said they're out east. Uh huh. Any idea what kind of work they'd be needing? Uh, I mean, if the, they might need some general labor around their warehouse. Huh? You big strong man, look like you could probably move some barrels. Probably move some barrels. All right, well, thank you. Anytime, sir. Give, give him a hat tip and I wander off towards the, towards the east. Right. You head and, off to, uh, towards the, the east changing. and uh, and there is, of course, like the houses, and you pass by, and you see Mary in an alleyway between some houses. Uh, I, once I see Mary, I'm going to stop and be like, Miss Davis, what are you doing in that alleyway? I was just comforting a woman inside her home. She was lonely. Another lady gives you, like, a small wave, standing there with Mary, just doing lady things and talking and catching up. Becoming fast friends. Man. Be safe. What's got All you right. upset that Miss Mary would be comforting you, if you don't mind I, me asking? I just miss my husband. He's been gone for a week. Uh, who's your husband? Name. You said mm -hmm. that she was, was this the Johnson lady? Sure, Matt? yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, um, was your husband a sheriff here? No. I believe that oh. was Mr. Frank. No, uh -huh, Sheriff, Sheriff oh. George Frank. Oh. 
I'm bad with names. I'm sorry. Oh, we saw the sheriff man out in the woods. Well, he's no, been no, missing no. since last night. Oh, he's up and about. He's just wandering around the woods trying to find these people. He didn't look like he was hurt or nothing, so didn't know he'd been missing since last night. He's working hard for you. That's good. Do you want tea, Miss Davis? Oh, you are too kind. I would love some tea. Come on in. And the ladies go in. The ladies go into a house, Emmett. Yeah. Well, once they go inside, I just continue to go off or find the Jenkins. Yep. Uh, Jenkins aren't hard to miss as you continue further. Eventually, like the houses get more spread out, and then you come along a fence post says Jenkins, and there is a big barn and a house. I go up to the house and knock on the door. What you want? I uh, was told y'all might have some need for some general labor. Oh, we definitely could use some help. We have a big delivery heading out to paradise and we need, we need barrels loaded onto the cart. The door opens up, old man came. Well, huh? I'm um, in need of a little bit of the cash so I can get a room at the end because I just got into town. Um, been more than willing to help you out. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, right? Yeah, I am. I am Archibald Jenkins. Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Emma McCoy. Good to meet you, Mr. McCoy. Glad you here. And you said you're trying to acquire uh, money for a room down there at the end? Yes, sir. Do you want better? You help me low barrels, you can stay in the bar? That's a mighty kind offer, Mr. Jenkins. Um, if you finish the cart by, by day's end, I'll even throw some dollars on top of your free room and board, sir. I'm much obliged. Huh? Point him out to me and I'll get him loaded up for you. With his cane, starts trying to hobble out of the doorway. I'll step out of his way and keep an eye on him. Just, he, just to make sure he like doesn't fall and break a hip or something. He moves so slow. As you have asked him to point out what you need doing, he is hobbling his way towards the barn a good hundred yards away from the house. So I'll move at the pace of Mr. Jenkins. Slow going, takes about 10 minutes to get there. He seems in no rush, but he is filling in. He's like, now, now the, the barrels, some of them are gonna be pretty heavy. Most of them, some of them might be light. I mean, but we just need to make sure that they're all parsed out and placed correctly. And then the, they, the, they'll make their way onward to paradise. Alrighty. There's occasionally like, you know, a younger man who looks like he's moving between the buildings on this farm. Uh, helpers, other employees, things like that. It's not just this old man, but... <laughs> There's clearly more work than he has the help for. Hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And he gets you to the barn, and sure enough, there's a there's a cart wagon, and there's maybe two barrels already on it. There's maybe fourteen more barrels that need to go up on there. Look at look at my watch. How what time is it now, Matt? About eleven. Okay. These 14 and the two that are already on the cart. Right, Mr. Jenkins? Yes, sir. Now, the ones uh, labeled JGT Fields, like, those seem to be close to the front because that's going to be the last drop-off. And then, so, you know, like here, and walks over to one of the barrels and 
pulls out a slip of paper is like, this is how they need to go. Like these these ones need to be on the back because it's going to be the first delivery and so on and so forth. And now I know it might seem like basic and simple work, but if you mess this up, like, you know, people's stuff is going to be delivered wrong and all kinds of huff and puffing. And then you're going to sully, sully the good Jenkins name. Can I trust I you, Mr. McCoy? Yes, do sir, this Mr. right. Jenkins. Yes, sir, you can certainly trust me to do this right. I've been doing logging. I know the importance of loading orders in the proper order. All right. I'm going to leave you to it, Mr. McCoy. You come back up to the house and you let me know when it's done. Yes, sir. I'm trying to... I'll, 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 see, I'll see if if Caroline can't make you a sandwich or something. Oh, that would be much appreciated, Mr. Mr. Jenkins. We <laughs> appreciate you, call. sir. Thank you for coming to hell. Get him a hat tip, and I'm gonna set my my big axe over by uh, on one against one of the walls. Gives you a bar. nod and starts hobbling his way back to his house. And I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna look at the order form and try to find all the ones that he said need to go up to the front. Put them in the front and just start moving barrels. They are of course not shape. all put together. No. Of course they aren't. Takes a little bit of moving around, sorting, finding them, spinning a barrel, just. Uh, perfect. Uh, you start moving barrels. Give me a d20. If I can get my mouse over here. <laughs> I'm going to spend the next speed for a reroll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not much better, damn it. This barrel, heavy. You like be like, all right, barrel time. What the? Is it just full of lead? What is the? Set it down. Not that you really got it up much to begin with. No. It just moved out of the way just slightly. Uh huh. Across the top is labeled JT Fields. Oh, this one's going to be. This is one of the ones I gotta go front. Are there any planks around, Matt? Like sturdy planks that I could use to make like a makeshift rail? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff around. G gather up a couple of uh, here in the barn. G gather up a couple of planks. I don't know if they have a dolly or not. I'm not looking for one right now. They don't. They did, there is no dolly. <laughs> but as you move things around and start looking um you move one of the planks and a sack kind of like falls out from a hole in the wall doesn't seem out of the ordinary except for one thing looks wet and brown I'm going to open the sack and look at it. Now, Emmett, you've lived in the mountains all your life. You've done hunting and everything. Mm -hmm. and you know, you know what leftover bits look like. Mm -hmm. There's, is that a stomach? Close the back up, put it back in the hole in the wall, and put the board back in front of it. Uh, that's not not investigating that anymore. Nope. People want to store it in random places like that. They can store it in random places like that. It won't know animal stomach. Nope. Just so you're aware. I figured it wasn't. Meanwhile, Evelyn. Mm hmm. Evelyn, you're going around trying to find some reading and writing work. That is much harder to find here in Tipton, as there's plenty of women folk who are also able to do this for their husbands and the men and so on and so forth. 
wasn't sure uh, how much was running around out here. Mm -hmm. But um, you come across uh, one group of ladies uh, who seem to be enjoying some tea and some biscuits together. And they're, they're, they're very friendly and welcoming, very Southern hospitality. It's like, well, come on, join us. And offering you some biscuit and a nice, not a jar, but like something that's been taken out of a jar, a nice bowl of apple butter that they just keep kind of smearing and like putting on their biscuits and eating. Uh, thank you. I'll sit down and have some of whatever they offer for drink. Mm -hmm. uh, tea, sweet tea. tea, not hot tea. Mm hmm. Have a drink. You have a drink? Sit and, sit and listen. Give me a d20 roll. <laughs> That's my second one. I love that you're rolling uh, the same way cricket rolls. Um, I'm gonna spend an XP. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, they are talking they're talking about the the local goings ons the missing peoples the all of that how it's a shame and how it's weird that this seems to only happen every seven years. Just in the the book I have on Appalachia, um, flip it up. Evelyn, gain an XP and choose somebody else to get an XP. Ooh. Um. That's Hazel. Yeah. Did I miss anything important? No. Depends on what you uh, think is important, but uh, <laughs> you'll find out, won't you? That's true. None of your books have relevant information to this fact, which is one of the intrusions of that I can take against you. So, hence the you getting your XP. Like, oh, look at that, a learned woman. You just walk around carrying them books. You ain't got no big, strong man to carry them for you. All oh, these books ain't that bad. Mm. It scrumptiously eats her biscuit with apple butter. We just came in off the road. So I, I like to have my book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, what, what brings you to Tipton? As far as I know, we're just passing through. Uh, Hatton. I was riding along with the group. Well, we are we are kind of like a way station, as it were. And so, that makes sense. That tracks well. It's great to have you all while you have here. Well, now, like I said, mostly seeing the sights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what about, uh, what about your, uh, compatriot? Which one? The, 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 the one that travels with you. Biscuit. What you mean? I travel with uh, a group of folk. Oh, there's a group of y'all? Mm-hmm. Thing. That's got to get pretty loud. Sometimes. Mm. Well, as long as you keep them locked up, who are we to judge? Why would I keep them locked up? Why would you keep them with you? Are we talking about the same thing? I don't know, sir.
sir. Biscuit. Evelyn just takes a few... St backs up a bit. And... Uh, I thank y'all for the tea. Um, you sure you don't want a biscuit? No, thank you. You sure Cliff don't want a biscuit? They all started yeah. giggle, lady like giggling, <laughs> like they know a tree, they, like they know something. Yeah, Evelyn bolts at that point. Evelyn bolts. Does Evelyn at any point look back? No. Okay. That that was uh, that was a nope, big big bold ball nope nope. Mary. Yep. Having tea. Having tea. And, uh, nice conversation. So many nice conversations. I'm... She is very, very talkative about her missing husband. <laughs> the background changes. <laughs> and then at some point I do have to leave, but um, mm -hmm. just nice casual conversation. If there's nothing of import, are you trying to guide out of her? Um, I don't know if I'd have the time to. Um, mm -hmm. did your husband seem confused? You didn't let him inside the house. He well, yeah, like it, it, it sounded like him and it looked like him, but but he should have keys, and he never said he he lost them or anything, so. Why couldn't he come in? Well, that's an awful good question. He's been missing so long, poor thing is probably in shock. You think I should have let him in? It's okay to be scared. And you were scared in the moment, but if he comes back around, I'm sure that if you just talk to him, let him come inside and warm up, maybe things will be better. Okay, but Miss. Okay, it's an awful long time to be gone. It is, but okay. You're, if he comes back, I'll I'll I'll, I'll be try to be more understanding for my man. Thank you, Miss Davis. <laughs> You're a good woman, and an awful good wife. Thank you. <laughs> He'll come back, sweetie. I promise you. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's about high time that I get out of your hair. Um, I'm happy I could help. Let me thank, know if I can help you thank anymore. You for, thank you for sitting with me. Would you like anything oh, to course. eat? While, would you like anything to eat? Oh, I, have no. some, I have some thank biscuits and butter. <laughs> they make it at the they make it at the home. Mike pulls out a jar of apple butter. I might actually be visiting the home sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you for offering. You keep that for yourself and your husband now. Uh, okay. Thank you, Miss Davis. It was great meeting you, too. Have a good night, Miss Johnson. Have a good day, Miss Davis. <laughs> Hazel. Yeah. You're just standing out there in the woods with your new, with your new voice friend. I'm sitting out there back against the dam. Kind of looking out to the rest of the woods. Could be another speed task. <laughs> if you're putting your back to the dam. Yeah. As you're sitting there back against the trees, the fallen trees. Kind of just like staring in the direction that the dam is facing. Like the vines that are within the, gro the, the mass of trees slowly, slowly coil around you and tighten and pull you up against the bark. 
I'm not here to hurt you. I'm just trying to figure out what I am here for. Mm-hmm. What am I here for? She just lets him hold, like, pull her against the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not trying to get away. Hazel, you are... You're not being, like, abused or off, but it feels more like it's trying to pull you into the trees. And it's starting to get a little rough against your back, but... No significant harm or discomfort. Yet. I'm gonna turn to try and look in there if I I know I'm like kind of smushed against them mm -hmm. but just if I like to turn like around look and... over your shoulder yeah um sure uh, you look in there and it looks like there's just a growing of kudzu vines hmm I don't have the book on this computer, but can I spend an XP for that that first sage intrusion where I can ask for like a vision that's helpful? Uh, hold on, I've got the book pulled up. Let, let's go it's... to it. What are you trying to suss out? What do you want your vision to be about? What am I supposed to do here? in Tipton, in this town. Why am I here? Well, you're here because very various reasons. Um, you get images of stone hallways lit up by candles. Dark figures wandering through the shadows. Three significant shadows walking about stopping at children's beds the darkness reaching out and swallowing a child fast asleep in their bed in the distance it looks like there's a fire off to the off to the east Just the smell of blood flooding your senses. Is that it you're ready for? Is it the darkness? We prepare for the flood. The blood or darkness? Blood is transitory. Darkness is eternal. Maybe I'll be back and see you. Be nice if I could see you. Can you let me go? We are all growing, all encompassing. <laughs> Okay. The vines grow tighter around you after it says that. Well, I'm not quite ready to join you. Thought I might try to stop the darkness. Can I go? Can you? Hmm. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to sit up against the vines. You, you'll you'll try to pull yourself free from the all-encompassing, all-ever-growing kudzu. Yeah, I'll try. And you let wrap itself around you. <laughs> Give me the shadows. It wasn't. It's true. But she, Hazel, you know specifically the green is also sometimes dangerous. And with your 15, you are able to pull yourself free. 
It is a struggle. The kudzu does not want to let you go. As far as it's concerned, you may be its next meal. You may not be its next meal. Maybe it's just holding on to you just because it wants to keep you close. But you're able to pull free. I'm a little confused because, you know, the green doesn't usually hurt. <laughs> Brush and leaves. Oh. But what what is good and what is evil? That is a question no one here can answer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up what I've already gathered and and kind of head back toward the town at a, a, a joggy pace. Okay, Emmett. Ah, you are. Oh. Kid, uh, give me a d20. Still just moving barrels. Yep. That's where all our account luck gone. Finish. <laughs> you, you crush your barrel. Once you rig up a system with the planks and are able to roll, you get this thing loaded in almost no time. Even. I double, I double e check real quick to make sure that they're all in the right order. Evens or odds? Even. Evens, always. One of the last barrels for Mr. Fields, J.T. Fields, the third. Mm -hmm. As you're rolling it, the lid of the barrel pops off and the contents within spill out. Mm. It's nothing messy, nothing dangerous, nothing like it'd be real quick to stuff back in it. Looks like golden eggs. Three of them rolled out. Golden eggs? There there are large eggs about the size of Hazel's head of a golden color. Gently knock. G gently just tap on one to see if they're hollow or not. Solid as a rock. You got me facing a moral quadra here. Because I as a player want to steal one. Or three. But I'm trying to figure out what Emmett would do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I put two of the eggs back in and pop the lid back on and, and like slam the lid back on. What are you doing with the third egg? It's going in my bag. Okay. All right, perfect. You get everything loaded up all nice and a Patreon brick for Emmett. <laughs> Mike! We'll get to that. All right, you get everything loaded up right around the time that a beautiful, lovely young woman comes walking up with a plate of sandwiches and a glass of milk. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, Mr. McCoy? That is I. Hi, uh, my father. Wow, you got that lo wagon loaded up so fast. We should keep yes, you ma around. You're a hard worker. <laughs> uh, I'm just passing through at the moment, man. Uh, everybody's always passing through. Well, that's a shame. We could really use a good hand like you, sir. Offers you oh, the sandwiches and milk. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, if you come over here, I mean, it, what I did was real simple. I just grabbed a couple of planks and laid them down to make a makeshift rail. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't know nothing about no labor or nothing, sir. I just I just make sure everybody's fed and everybody's happy and good. Well, that's mighty kind of you. I feed the chickens and the geese. Geese? 
Mm-hmm. I don't know too many folk who have uh, geese on their property. Listen, my, my, my papa says that while dogs make good defenders, everybody's scared of them geese. That makes sense. Them in the family make us unholy, to say the least. You, you, you do not know the half, my friend. Well, it's a shame you won't be staying. Would have been nice to get to know you better. Oh, I mean, well, um, Mr. Jenkins mentioned that if I got all that loaded up by nightfall, that he'd be willing to let me stay in the barn for the night. Sir, what are you implying? No, I'm... I am not, not that kind of lady. Man. And turns and just walks <laughs> off. <laughs> If she wanted to just converse, I take a look at the sandwich just to make sure. After seeing the the stomach in the bag, mm -hmm. just make sure that there's nothing like human. On no, the doesn't sandwich. look anything human. Nice roast beef and ham sandwiches. Sandwiches. All right. I'm gonna set the milk down on the side of the on top of one of the barrels, and then just start just chowing down on the sandwich once it's gone um because it's because i've been working and sweating and everything I'm not gonna drink the milk because don't want that to, to curdle in my stomach that would be bad okay and it's just 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 logical because i don't want to throw up because are, of it. are you going to stay on the jenkins farm or are you going back to town uh, I am going to stay on the Jenkins farm. Okay. Well, then, uh, conveniently, because Evelyn is not looking back or anything, uh, Hazel, Mary, and Evelyn uh, will convene back in Town Square around the same time. Hazel looks like she has a heckin' concern. Uh, Hazel's concern grows as Evelyn's not blue. <clears throat> Oh, not Evelyn. What are you doing here? There's some weird women out there. Three of them? Was it three of them? There was three of them. Three, yep. There's three here doing something dark. Something dark with the kids. I don't... Y'all want some berries? Yeah... I talked talk to some kudzu. Didn't know plants had anything interesting to say. They kind of wanted me to stay, but I had stuff to do because they're dark and uh, stone walls and shadow snatching kids. I don't... Y'all seen any... Don't forget shadow? about the fire and the smell of blood off to the east. <laughs> it's also We're important. <laughs> Where'd, um, where'd Emmett go? I uh, was looking for work. Where? Miss, Miss Ellen is, is uh, she got real spook taking a nap. Okay, well, don't try anything funny. Nothing to punch yet. Seems it's like there might be, though. Y'all seen a fire? I haven't seen anything like it, no? No blood? No way? It pulls out the tucked, uh, tucked away hip flask. Passes over to Miss Hazel. Oh, drinks more than is probably for a play. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't matter. Glugging, glugging hard. Just drove down the entire flask. I think we're both going to need it right like... now. Where? Okay. There's us. Where's the three women? Points back the way it came. Turns to march that way. If I can't see them is from it, where we are. Was the three women the same as the three uh, church folk when no. we came up? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. You are making your way southeast here in Tipton. Uh, notice the houses are a bit rattier, a bit more run down. Or maybe the poorer individuals of, of the town of Tipton reside and dwell. And as you're walking, and Evelyn points out, now, Evelyn, when you were wandering and walking, things didn't seem so quite as run down. And the house that you stepped into seemed relatively nice. But here you're looking at, like, busted out walls where there was Just once a right. window frame. There's nothing there. This ain't right. It did what not. What do you mean this ain't right? Came up. How could it just change like that? I don't know. Where is that man? We better go get find him. <laughs> Where are the kids? Uh, The thunder sounded like a damn gunshot in the music. <clears throat> Is there anyone around us besides us? Uh, give me a d20. Okay. Not that you can see. Hmm. Where did they go? I think it. Emmett headed towards the farms that way. Was was that way east? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Gonna run. <laughs> Hazel takes off in usual Hazel fashion, <laughs> without telling anybody what's going on. Just books it. <laughs> All right, and uh, are you guys just taking off after her? Or are you taking in your surroundings? <laughs> what are we doing, Mary? Um, yeah, we're gonna try and do a bit of both, putting more care into, like, taking in surroundings. But... Okay, give me a d20. A 29. Fuck. <laughs> Can I re-roll that? <laughs> if you would like to spend an XP to re-roll that. You don't see shit. Still don't see shit. Still don't see uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you might see the brick you trip over. All right, you do not you do not see anything as you Please, chase after chase off after Hazel. So not Evelyn. Hazel <laughs> took off running in the direction towards the farms to the east that Emmett went. Uh, Mary kind of looked around, didn't seem to see anything, and took off after Hazel. What are you doing? Following suit. Are you just running, or are you taking in your surroundings as you run? I'm going to keep an eye on what's around me. Give me a d20. In one of the rundown houses, as you're running away, while there's no window in the building anymore, you swear that you can see like, like a curtain, a, a piece of cloth that's been like draped over where a window should be, like kind of like pulled away and somebody looking out. But as you take off running, like the, the hand lets go and the curtain falls back down. Okay. Just remember that for later. Uh, but yeah, chasing off. The three of you that. run off to the east, heading towards the Jenkins farm. And it's a nice, lovely looking estate. There is, there's a couple of hands walking around. There's a, a very beautiful young woman who's kind of like heading towards the barn with an envelope. You don't see Emmett anywhere. Hey, you. Hey, you. Excuse us, miss. 
Oh, excuse us, miss. Is there a big tall guy around here somewhere? Rude and very forward. Yes, ma'am, he's in the barn. Cool. I'm a, I'm gonna bye. <laughs> Just head toward the barn. <laughs> Runs after Hazel. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> The, the three ladies make their way deeper into the Jenkins farm. And you get to the barn, and sure enough, there is uh, Emmett kind of just standing there. Sandwich, a glass of milk off the sandwiches, a glass of milk off to the side. What are you doing? I'm also doing some work. Points at the cart. Anything weird around here? Yeah, that's what I'm just looking around. Um... Bends down slightly and whispers, Yeah, I found a bag with a whole bunch of hunting bits, and there was a stomach in there that wasn't an animal stomach. Oh, and um, apparently they got golden eggs, like solid gold eggs in a barrel. Those three ladies saw me. Something ain't right in this town. Well, the woods told me they were preparing for it, so. I don't know which it, it is. You found any people skins? I don't know. You think somebody's eating them or wearing them? Mm, out here in the woods? Um, oh. Matt, I'm going to ask you this one because I want to make sure that I do this right. Well, being, having grown up in the woods, in this, in the general area and everything in the mountains, what are the skinwalkers? Or no, like the, the myth of the skinwalkers? Uh, you can give me a d20 roll. <laughs> There's all kinds of haints and nasties out here in the mountains of Appalachia. Um, skinwalkers. Uh, it wouldn't be so far-fetched that, you know, there might be something out there that collects skins and likes to wear them like you like to wear your shirts and pants. If we're talking about, like, wearing skins, there's... rumors, myths, legends, whatever you want to call it, of... Some talk, some stuff out here in the woods that wear that collects and wear skin like we wear clothes. I mean, that's what I was asking. Hold yeah, the book and sir, an you don't sir. you don't yeah. need the book. No, no. <laughs> you <laughs> you, Evelyn Cliff Caldwell, are <laughs> are very. Very familiar with something that does exactly what Emmett and Hazel are talking about. Because it's maybe made a similar deal with a thing under a bridge. Y'all, the sheriff got back yet? I don't know. We got to town. I was looking. We all split up. I started looking for work. Got pointed out over to this direction. Anybody heard about the body in the woods yet? No, I don't know. Either of y'all? Not anybody except for the one that we found earlier. Wait, there was another one? <laughs> we probably. Alright, Ms. Evelyn, you heard anything about any bodies in the woods? Any other bodies being found in the woods? I just heard folks missing. 
No, I'm just wondering if the sheriff's gotten a chance to get back, because there's no way he wouldn't have found that. Found what? And then there's no way he wouldn't come looking for us. Right? I mean, I brought him in the direction of it. And the blood. Anyways. I kind of expect to be arrested by now. As I, was, as I was saying before the power dropped again, Evelyn. <laughs> Uh, you don't even need a book or anything. You know that there is one particular uh, per thing, entity, that made a deal with that same thing that lives under that bridge that, that happened on that one fateful night. Okay. That was so long ago. And you're also able to parse together, like, Emmett just admitted that there's a uh, an offering in a bag, which is mm -hmm. familiar enough to you, not Evelyn. But you're able to start piecing things together. From the open barn doors, there's a small clearing of throat and, and beautiful Miss Caroline Jenkins standing there. And she just has a plate of, plate of biscuits, some bacon, and some apple butter off to the side. Well, hey there, y'all. What is up with you and the biscuits? In this town. Well, the the home is famous for its apple butter. Everywhere I turn it, biscuits and butter. I got bacon too. Ain't nothing wrong with biscuits and butter. The sheriff got back yet? Uh, if he is, he may be back in town. Like we're out here on the outskirts, so I don't know. Y'all hungry? Maybe. Well, here, come get you some. And sets no. it down. <laughs> if it's not glowing. <laughs> uh, the biscuits look fine. The bacon looks fine. There's something off about the apple butter. G gonna reach out and just grab one single biscuit. I'm gonna grab a biscuit and take a bite. Smacks the biscuit out of both y'all's hands. <laughs> I already took the bite. <laughs> no, before you bite, smacking the biscuit. Oh, I declared no. it. <laughs> roll for it. You know what? Let's go for it. Uh, both of you roll me a d20. <laughs> I don't know if you can uh, oh, it in the man. chat. Just like, smack the biscuit out from her hand. <laughs> I was already on it. Ah. Mary Davis dodges and takes the bite of the biscuit. Mary, did you, did you just butter? have did you just have plain biscuit or did you put some apple butter well, was, on it? There was apple butter on it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it really should make it interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, Miss Mary Davis eats part of the biscuit. Eat, eats a good bite of the biscuit. <laughs> Nothing happens to her. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why y'all are freaking out over a biscuit. Cause that apple butter looks real wrong. Grabs up the apple it, butter and chucks it against the wall. They just don't make it like we do back at home. <laughs> hey Emmett, you gonna get mad at not Evelyn for being too aggressive? I, what the hell is going on? That is a great question. That is a great question, Mr. McCoy, says Caroline Jenkins. Ms. Jenkins, I'm, I'm sorry for their behavior uh, right now. And I'm sorry if I came off as forward earlier. That wasn't my intent. All you, of you are all of you are very inappropriate people. Never I, said I, I was. Miss conversing what have I not, done? Not other things. You're right, not you, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, that sandwich, by the way, uh, was delicious earlier. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Well. Y'all go set something on fire. I'm not going to set nothing on fire. She turns and, like, starts pulling one of the barn doors closed. Nope. Immediately runs through and stops the door. Well, she still has to get the second door. Well, uh, it's... We're not going to be caught inside of it. Give me a speed defense. I will gladly give you one as well, because I still have to go get my pay and everything from Mr. Jenkins. 
proficient in those, aren't I? Ha! Uh, uh, fuck. Can I use my edge because it's a speed thing? Uh, you can use edge to lower a difficulty. Uh, well, it, it gives one free point, so it costs you two speed points to lower the difficulty. Yeah. Uh, from uh, uh, the speed defense. We're trained in it. Okay. All right. So. I'm going to spend four speed points. You'd have to spend five to lower it by two. That's fine. I'll spend about, I'll spend five. If I can type the right damn number. <laughs> spend one spe uh, speed or two speed to get over ten. Uh. Is that how it works? That, that is not mm -hmm. how it works. How uh, does it work? So pretty much the way or it lowers works. lowers difficulty. It, right? it, it lowers the the task. Uh -huh. So. You, you can spend points. I will let you know that. Pull him back up. <laughs> uh, you guys, the difficulty for stuff against this. <laughs> uh, you would need, Evelyn, you would need to spend Two. Two? That's to how I was going to, for. Okay. Uh, Emmett, you would need to spend... 12, 4... You would need to spend a lot, Emmett. <laughs> okay, then I'm just going to... spend my last XP and re-roll it. Okay. Because I only had 12 speed left after earlier. All right. Evelyn, you're trying to stop the door. Mm -hmm. Emmett, you are running out because you're going to go talk to Mr. Jenkins. Yep. Okay. Uh, young, tiny, pretty Caroline Jenkins uh, tries to stop you. She tries to stop you both. Uh, Evelyn, not Evelyn, Cliff, whatever you want to call yourself right now. The door is, you are with all your might, and she, tiny little woman, two tiny women, just battling over the door, which gives them enough time to get out of the barn. And Evelyn, as you're standing there fighting with the door, you notice, just out of the corner of your eye as you stand there facing her, right along here, along her neck, is just a tiny, Razor thin red line. What? And then the worst possible words you can hear. It's a tagline of sorts that it uses. This other thing that made a deal with old bloody. Skin Tom. You hear tiny little Caroline's voice. Well, shit. And that's where we're going to leave off. As Evelyn, the dread sets in of this terrifying, terrible monster that's trying to keep you guys enclosed in the barn with it. Mm. Got something activated, but we'll do it next time. <laughs> that's fine. That's great. Because it's getting close to time, and we don't have enough time for a combat situation and stuff. And yeah. this is a, this is a good little cliffhanger. Good little little nice cliffhanger. In Old Gods of Appalachia, every seven years, uh, the green and the dark come together to perform a ritual to keep something very terrible bound in the earth. Skint Tom is one of those individuals from the dark that does so. It made a deal with a monster called Old Bloody, where you have to occasionally offer offerings of blood and organs and stuff in order to keep receiving powers from Old Bloody. That is what's happening currently here. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten far enough into the podcast to encounter Skint Tom, he is a lovely, lovely individual. I don't believe you. He's great. 
He saves one of them Walker sisters. Ugh. Good game today, guys. A lot of investigating here in the lovely, peaceful town of Tipton, Tennessee. Definitely nothing wrong with it at, no, not all. at all. Nothing at all. I was at least <laughs> right about it being a cult. I mean, uh, you were very wrong about it being a cult, actually. It's a cult. It's, a cult. It, it's not a cult. It's uh, not. <laughs> Evelyn, who made your day today? It feels like a cold. This Mary Davis being the chaos gremlin pushing <laughs> all the things and eating all the apple butter. <laughs> <sighs> Amazing. Give uh, me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it right. <laughs> Emmett? Oh, I gotta get mine to Evelyn slash Clip for ju just the way you interact with people. Because the way you interact with people, Mike, is so different from the way that Cricket does. Mm -hmm. And it's a treat every time. It's true. <laughs> Hazel. I'm going to give it to Emmett for his female apology tour. <laughs> <laughs> These women, so sorry about them. Normally I'm apologizing for Clark or just hitting him upside the head. I don't know, maybe it's the moon, y'all. I'm real sorry. They keep talking. I can't hit y'all upside the head. I'll get my ass kicked. Yeah, give them an inch. Next thing you know, they're taking a country mile. <laughs> <laughs> These three. And no, Miss, that to me. Miss Mary Davis. Um... We're going to give it to Hazel for being a little sassy. Being yeah. a little sassy today. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And uh, <laughs> just zooming off all over the place like she usually does. <laughs> oh, she got that whiskey in her. She's good to go. Nobody's going to believe me if I tell you what's going on anyway. I'm out of here. <laughs> you can follow me or not. She's learning that you'll follow her. <laughs> My, my favorite thing from this entire episode, this episode was the episode, once we got into town, just this motherfucker just keeps patting me on the head. Something's gonna happen. Lose a hand. I was so uh, tempted to do it again right there at the end. She's well, quick with a hatchet. Well, guys, uh, this was the penultimate episode. Uh, we uh, have one more left in us. No! Unless, okay. unless, no. unless things drag, in which case we'll maybe revisit having another one at the end of the month. Uh, we'll but, spend a whole hour just role playing. We'll, we'll get another we one. We can and we will. <laughs> we, 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 we will. We sure as fuck can. Guys, These sessions um, go by so quick. They really do. These yeah. games are really good. Uh, we yeah. are back tomorrow Probably. with season's beatings. Uh, more of our Christmas special which is also nearing its end. Uh, and then Fridays, we have Vampire the Masquerade run by the player of Hazel Booth, uh, which has been amazing and fun and a treat. And I definitely didn't make someone kill their mom last night. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally didn't do that. Totally didn't Something do that. Something tells me I should have popped into the stream now. Um, oh, you're so yeah. good. But there were consequences yeah. last night. That was the whole theme of last night, consequences. Yeah. As Ashley is currently doing, uh, we have a very active, lovely Discord community. We'd love to have you over there. If you have not uh, joined us yet, uh, please come join. Come hang out. Come talk about tabletop games and video games. Do you play World of Warcraft? Uh, a lot of us are playing World of Warcraft now. <laughs> that reminds me. That's what I was going to download earlier. Yes, more. Number 10. I've played Warcraft in the past. I just don't remember if I know what my login is. For it anymore. It's fine. I had, you know. a, I had a monk on there. It's the panda. Uh, we're not even do, we're not even that far into the game. We're playing yeah. classic, which isn't even too pandy time yet. Yeah, uh, but if you would if you play World of Warcraft, you're watching at home, and you want to find a new group to play with. Well, uh, me and Jen at least are always in character while we're running around. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> I see y'all playing, and I'm just so like, ratchet. what the hell are they doing this time? We played the most <laughs> ratchet things we possibly could have made. It all came from random name generation. And next thing you know, 
it got so bad, Pierce had to veto certain sayings. <laughs> Pierce. Pierce was like, we're putting a hard no on that. Ah, uh, too far. You guys got Pierce to say no hard yep. but down? No, not, it it wasn't even it. us guys. It was just Jen. Jen did it. Jen, what the fuck did you do? We'll tell you off stream. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, if you this is your first time checking out uh, our Old Gods game, uh, head over to YouTube. All of our previous games are up there, including uh, this. And if you'd like to see the events that have led to this, uh, you can see wonderful times in Barlow, Kentucky, uh, the wonders that was Fort Wonder. And of course, here we are at Tipton where we're ending. And if you know Old Gods and you're paying attention to timelines, you might know what's about to happen to our fun, fun friends here in Tipton, uh, Tennessee. Who or oh, what is to be encountered? We'll find Fort out. Wonder has been my favorite episode, by the way, for this game. Thank you. Just, I love the the child as having to, as adults having to get back into the childlike more mm -hmm. imagination. And of course, you know, Peyton. And of course, Patreon is how we fund things. We have new games coming up. We have a new season coming up, which means new merch, uh, so on and so forth. Patreon is all of those things, uh, is how we fund all of those things, rather. Uh, so if you like what we're doing, if you want to get in on our YouTube credits, if you want to have weighted voting when it's voting time for games and things and stuff, if you want merch, if you want whatever, uh, you do that by becoming a Patreon. So please, please do. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. I was, we were joined today by Miss Mary Davis, portrayed by RD2, our everybody's favorite chaos goblin, gremlin, <laughs> whatever we want to call her. Hazel Booth, portrayed by Jen of Thieves, one who is genuinely trying to keep things on task <laughs> and sometimes succeeding. Emmett McCoy, portrayed by Ashley the Mage Rage, Witch, Brick, Magic Ashley, the named uh, The Brick. Uh, and one that I am completely forgetting. Uh, and of course, Beautiful. Evelyn Caldwell, this time portrayed by Glenn Dizzle, but also portrayed by sometimes Miss Cricket. And shout outs to Leslie Beautiful. Clark, the people that make the old gods of Appalachia Discord kind of be like, what the heck? Because uh, mm -hmm. of how he pronounces Appalachia, and it's great. Oh my God, Appalachia? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I just I love know. how he pronounced it correctly last game, and it was technically like a mistake still. <laughs> right. Guys, we will see you on our next stream. Thank you for hanging out with us, and I hope the rest of your Saturday is amazing. And remember, Daddy loves you. <laughs>